about restricted access even though we don't pay the congestion charge and we've got kind of privileges on that front there's still so many streets now where they've got monday to friday seven minutes you can't go down there you can't go down here and i'm actually going the opposite way to the way i want to go now simply because of all the restrictions it was stuck yesterday tower bridge i hope it's not stuck open today It's actually quite nice suspension on this van because I've always had vans and some of them are a little bit harsh. We think of electric vehicles as modern technology but for 70 years we've had the milk float. Probably had my first driving experiences on a milk float, you know, when you just used to push the bar down and it go forward and the milkman would let you drive it if you, if you delivered up all the long drives and all the difficult ones for you. So when I'm driving around town, I tend to just leave it in the eco mode. It's got three settings this, so you can put it in the eco mode, which is gonna give you the best mileage, if you like, out of your battery charge. Then you've got the medium one, and then you've got the power mode, and the power mode is when you've got a load in your vehicle, when you're really laden down. Just driving around town, I haven't actually done that many miles. Maybe I've done 25 miles. It's actually knocked off about 40 miles from the range, so it's telling me that's all I've got left. Where you select drive, you also select B, regenerative braking. So when you brake, you don't need to brake, you just take your foot off the accelerator, the engine slows you down, and as it slows you down, it's recharging it. It's got so many safety things. It's got something which actually stops you, well, helps to prevent you crashing into the vehicle in front. Just brilliant, a little radar. It's got lane correction as well, so that if you start drifting out of your lane, it'll help you go back into your lane. There's a lot to take in with this vehicle, but I am absolutely loving it. I really surprised myself with this because I thought, okay, I'll give it a go. You know, I've got, ideologically, I'm for it because who wants to pollute the cities? You know, if we can get clean air, we're all gonna be happier. You know, it's a great thing to do. I'll tell you what, the money to spend on that, even that scaffolding job is gonna be a million quid's worth, isn't it? Come on, mate, you could get a double-decker bus through there. <laughs> all right, Mickey. I'll just, I'll just drop them off. I'll, I'll move it in a minute, all right? Oh, sides. So the day's beginning to warm up and uh, unfortunately I haven't got my shorts on today but it might be at this point where you think okay stick the air conditioning on what you've got to do is just have a look at your mileage I've got 120 miles left on the clock I won't need that so I can afford to put the air con on my last van was built in Luton. Well, the van I've got at the moment, well, I say my last van. I don't own this one. This is going back <laughs> at the end of the week, sadly. But, um, you know, if I change to another vehicle, I'd be very, very happy with this. Happy days. It's free. Guess what? What? Well, doesn't fit. That's the other one. That's in. Tap here. 
So I grabbed this sandwich from around the corner and just as I drove around, two empty parking bays there with the chargers free. And I didn't quite understand that it didn't fit my van, but because I got the charging lead with me, there's also a place where you could just plug the charging lead in. So that's fine, that's all right. You'd think they'd all be standardized, wouldn't you? But there you go, maybe they will be one day. But anyway, I can leave that on charge. I haven't got to pay any parking for that. That's a, a free parking zone. So that saves a bit of money. So while I'm having my sandwich, I'll probably just give it 20 minutes or so, you know, to see how it goes. I kind of know where I am with my mirrors, but this screen here, which a lot of you have probably already got on your vehicles, but it's perfect, pretty amazing. The only thing I would say is that on the side, I have to back into some real small gateways and things. And I was backing in somewhere the other day and I left a couple of, probably just two inches or something like that and the beeper was going off like crazy saying you're too close you're too close and i'm thinking no i'm not i can see in the mirrors exactly where i am this cable here is my rig up this is just me using the dash cam if i own this vehicle i'd obviously run it in the headlining there make a tidier job but because i've only got it for a couple of weeks i've just rigged this dash cam up because i'm a great believer in the dash cam and if anything happens to the vehicle and the uh, somebody pulls out in front of me I'd like it to be recorded so look at these houses they're lovely aren't they little arts and crafts houses oh look it's got a blue plaque Albert Chevalier lived there or maybe he was Albert Chevalier shut up so it shows me on the little pop-up in front of me that We've got a 40 mile an hour speed limit in this area and uh, we are doing 41 miles an hour, 40 now, so that's all right. I'd like a longer wheelbase version of it if I had it. I still like the twin cab, so I'd probably go for a long wheelbase, twin cab, but for me, I'd definitely go electric. That's just my opinion. I'm not trying to sell it to anybody else. I understand all the reasons why you might want to stick with the diesel. The thing that really surprises me, I've heard people talk about this in the past, about the amount of torque you get out of an electric motor because there's no gearbox and no loss of transmission. It's kind of more direct, if you like. And it is amazing. I mean, if I put this into the top mode, which is the power mode, and I put my foot down on it, it is nuts for a van. I think electric motors, everybody knows that the acceleration you can get out of electric motors is way above what you get out of an internal combustion engine because there is no lag, no lag at all. It's a, it's a real revelation for me. I've got to say, you know, the only thing I've really driven electric motor wise before this is a Dodgem car. And the milk flow and the milk flow let's not forget the milk flow so what you see as you're driving around london and other cities in the uk is this ulez thing which is the ultra low emission zone london and glasgow have got it and it's coming to manchester it's coming to birmingham it's coming to brighton as well it'll get there you're going to see it folks in a city near you if you're going to buy one of these you can get a uk government grant a plug-in grant as they call it for vans uh, and it's about six thousand pounds or up to six thousand pounds that's a magic word up to we've got here the top of the range vehicle and the top of the range vehicle after you get that grant is coming out at around forty five thousand pounds plus a bit of loose change so that's a lot of money for a van you know people go whoa hang on a minute 45 grand am I ever going to get that back but it's not all about getting it back some of it's about keeping the air clean you can get a cheaper version of it you can get down to about 32,000 pound starting price now if you like me your VAT registered take the VAT off then you're starting to get somewhere and the other thing to remember is that it is zero company van tax you don't pay any of that now I did say the other day in one of our videos that I had a, go a guy who was sitting outside my house for half an hour running his diesel engine just to keep his aircon going you've got no idling fight there's no engine idling there's no emissions there's no noise there's nothing so you're sitting there it's absolutely fine St Pancras Station 
they were going to demolish at one point you know they decided couldn't see a use for it get rid of it and now it's an absolute jewel isn't it beautifully restored but the other one that's really surprising a whole area that they decided they needed to demolish and it was only because of a, a very active campaign by people to stop it to prevent it happening that it still exists today Covent Garden Oh. that whole area and you just can't believe that somebody thought let's get rid of all that and build some I don't know what they're going to build it would have been some 60s crap wouldn't it it would have been awful so if something's worth preserving it's worth fighting for you know you've got to get active and do it because St Pancras Station and also Covent Garden I mean that both of those are just absolute they would have been a tragic loss wouldn't they to us really so Clerkenwell, this is where I was born, this is where I grew up for the first few years of my life. You've got Sadler's Wells, you've got wells all around London. And those wells, obviously when London was, you know, in its early days when they didn't have a water system, that really didn't come in until probably the Victorians really. But before that, people used to go to the well. Great meeting places, you know, people would know you were going to go down to the wells and all sorts of people would go down to the wells trying to sell stuff, you know, anybody's got any wares and that jugglers and magicians and all sorts of things sprang up around the wells but they were very important so Clark and Well here, Sadler's Wells just up the road here. We're on the motorway today and um, I've got a full load of tools on. It's driving beautifully, it really is amazing really. The, you know, it's very, very responsive, nice to drive. Keep trying to change gear. When I change lanes here, there's a little red light that comes on in the top left of the, of the wing mirror. And I thought, what's that all about? And it is just literally when you're changing lanes that it happens and the other thing that happens is if you change lanes without indicating you get a warning on the dashboard saying that you're drifting over from one lane to another so if you're indicating it's obviously you're telling the vehicle that you meant to do it so if you just move across the lanes like I'm going to do now oh yeah that's it and it's just giving me a warning and a beep to say you're drifting across you muppet one day Vehicles will drive themselves, and James and I can just have a kip. <laughs> <laughs> Extra load in the back. Arrive refreshed. <laughs> well, we made it. We got a load of tools in the back. We were running on normal rather than eco, and uh, we're not going to get back. That's not that. bad, though, is it? No, no. So now we will need to get this trickle charging, but if we don't get it enough... Mm to get us home and I don't want to run it tight on it yeah uh, if we don't get enough to get us home we're gonna to have to find a rapid charge eight somewhere. miles per charge of an hour hour yeah, yeah I don't want to be here that long <laughs> <laughs> oh right that's the bit you need to see <laughs> that's what I like to see the customer's absolutely fine about it because um, I said to him if we can nick your power we won't charge you all the mileage. We'll still charge them some, obviously. So that's it. For us, this job, this job is 180 miles round trip. And that's, that's in a day. So James, him saying he doesn't ever work in Essex, he's blown that out of the water now. He's now become an international traveler. That's right, he'll be in Suffolk before you know. He will, <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be. Where's that other job you got? Um, Oh, Weymouth. No, 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 no. Where's your Far Eastern one? Oh, Philippines. the Philippines, yeah. Philippines, yeah. yeah. yeah he's, got, there, he's got a big fan base in the Philippines <laughs> now. It's now 11 o'clock and we've got 52 miles of range in here. 48 plus the 52, that's actually just going to get us home. So while Roger's working, I thought I'd give the van a proper charge because this three pin adapter is really only for emergency trickle charges. If you've got a proper charging point at home, it's going to cost around £10 for a full overnight charge to put about 200 miles in the bank. 
I used this ZapMap app to find a pub just five minutes away. It's only got a seven kilowatt charger, but it is free to use. You'll actually find quite a few free charging points in car parks and supermarkets. The My Peugeot app lets you connect to the van. You can remote control it. You can book a service. You've got tele-maintenance. You've got all kinds of driving data, digital handbook. You've got all kinds of stuff there. You can even locate the van if you've lost it. So we're just about to give this vehicle back and I really have enjoyed driving it an awful lot. The only thing I would say is that if you're like me and you do mixed journeys, you do long journeys, you do short journeys, then you really need to think about that charging because when we did the trip up to Colchester the other day, say 90 miles up there, we got there, there wasn't as much charge left as we thought there was because we had a load of tools in the back and I had James with me. So we limped home, we literally went on the tortoise mode and got back the last few miles was a real fingers crossed job. If you're doing local journeys, if you know the journeys that you're doing, then that's fantastic. If you're doing the kind of mileage I'm doing, then there's always a risk that you're not gonna be able to get a recharge point. Now, I would say that if the government is really serious about stopping the manufacture of internal combustion engines, they really have got to look at this whole problem of the charging infrastructure because a lot of the houses around here couldn't put a proper charging point in. Fantastic idea, electric vehicles, I love them. The other thing that a lot of people are interested in is the cost. Obviously you're not paying out for diesel, so you're saving a bit of money there. You're saving money because you're not paying that tax on the van. You aren't paying a congestion charge. So it's a win-win on all those counts and uh, it doesn't cost as much to charge it up as it does to would do to fill it up. If I was keeping this, I'd definitely be putting in a fast charge there. Expect higher electricity bills. If you've got solar panels, by the way, and you're feeding something back into the uh, national grid, then that's an ideal situation for you because you really will start to save a lot of money there.